so today we are in Luke verses 21 to 38 and a, a large section of this passage is the genealogy, a list of Jesus's ancestry, the sort of passage that for many years I would just gloss over and certainly it's not the sort of passage that I would usually ever teach on, not least because then you'd have to pronounce all of the difficult Hebrew names. <laughs> but the thing is, um, it is still scripture and not one word of scripture is ever wasted or unnecessary. And, and hopefully, if I were to ask you what is the purpose of this passage of the genealogy, you would, as with all scripture, hopefully say to reveal more of who Jesus is. And that would be the right answer, in my opinion. That's what the purpose of scripture is. And that's exactly what happens as we dig into this list of names. We see more of who Jesus is. Now, the passage starts with Jesus being baptised with the people by John. It's loaded with imagery from the Old Testament. Jesus, our Saviour, came as one of us. So his baptism at the hands of John affirms his humanity and his humility. It's also echoing the exodus at the time of Moses. In a sense, Israel, the nation, was baptised by Moses as the nation passed through the Red Sea. It symbolised them leaving their lifestyle of slavery and becoming a free people. And Paul unpacks that for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 and 2, where he says, for I do not want you to be ignorant of the facts, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud, that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptised into Moses in the cloud, in the sea. So Luke is showing us that Jesus is about to lead a new Israel into a new exodus. And as Jesus comes up out of the water, we see this incredible revelation and picture of the Trinity at work. Here is God the Son being baptised and God the Spirit rests on him as a dove. And God the Father says, this is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Now you may have heard me say this before, but I just love the fact that at this point in Jesus's life, before he's performed any miracles, before he's preached any sermons, before he's made any disciples, the Father speaks words of love and pleasure over his Son. And likewise, you too are loved by the Father, not based on what you have or haven't done, but based on the fact that you are his. You are his son, you are his daughter. Luke then points out that Jesus is 30 years old at this moment. It's significant because in Numbers 4.3, um, 30 is the age that a priest can begin their ministry. And then we get into this uh, list of names. I'm not going to read them out to you. Uh, only we have to connect those names to the words of the father this is my son can you see that in the genealogy so jesus is not just the son of joseph he's the son of god but we can trace his earthly ancestry right back to adam who when you look in verse 38 you see that he too is the son of god both adam and jesus so the genealogy qualifies Jesus in, in the same way uh, for someone to claim a throne as a king. They would need to demonstrate their ancestral line. Luke demonstrates that Jesus is qualified to save us because he alone can reverse the sin of the first Adam. Adam who sinned on, on behalf of all mankind. Adam who brought all mankind into conflict with God. Now Jesus, our second Adam, the Son of God, 
can represent all of mankind to save all of mankind and bring us back into relationship with God. And finally, just because I think it's really cool, um, I just just look at the names from Noah to Adam or Adam to Noah, the first 10 names. Now, hopefully you know that names have meaning. And that was especially true in biblical times. So what happens if you take those first 10 Hebrew names and read them in English? Well, Adam in Hebrew means mankind. Seth means appointed. Enosh means mortal. Kenan means sorrow. Five Mahalalel means the blessed God. Six Jared means shall come down. Enoch number seven means teaching. Methuselah mean, number eight means his death shall bring. Number nine Lamech means despair. And Noah means comfort. And so as we read their names in order, we get something like this, that man has been appointed a time of mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching. His death shall bring despair and yet comfort. I think that's pretty cool because what God is doing through their names, he is writing his salvation plan. He is writing through their history, his big story. And the same is true for you and I. Our names have been written in his book of life. And as we um, enter into this salvation story through Jesus, we too get woven into his redemptive plan, his big salvation story for the world.